All right. <laughs> I, I, wanna, I just want to say something. Being with June and Pat yesterday uh, in the White House when the president put pen to paper and signed the legislation was, I mean, I'll let June talk about it, but it was a day we live for because so many of you in this room uh, suffered uh, with the loss of people you love. June and Pat, uh, of course, you and your brother. And the efforts that you made yes. to bring this to the attention of Vermont and to the nation, and then for us to be in this room with uh, mostly widows, a few widowers uh, from across the country who lost their loved one, and it was unknown to the community what the cause was and that they actually died directly as a result of serving our country. And the uh, pain that uh, those families had to go through uh, to fight for the health care that all veterans are entitled to, uh, and to see uh, that achievement of, of people like uh, um, Pat and uh, June and uh, Laura and you it was just a wonderful day. And Vermonters really led, I think, the way on this with starting with our uh, men and women in the, in the service, uh, with our state legislature, uh, uh, Chip and Tom, who were here, and really appreciate all the leadership you provided. Uh, and uh, it was just a case where everyone's pulling together, doing the right thing. Uh, acknowledging that the cost of the war has to include the cost of caring uh, for the warrior. Uh, and it's always, I think, really terrible where uh, there isn't a presumption <laughs> for people who are in cancer-causing uh, situations that they got that when they were in the cancer-causing situation uh, in Afghanistan, in Iraq. Uh, so it was a very humbling experience for me, and I just want to acknowledge uh, what a special moment it was. Uh, to be present, and we're here today uh, to talk about that, but uh, I cannot express uh, to all Vermonters uh, enough how proud every Vermonter should be about the women uh, in this state who led this effort on behalf of uh, really not the loss of their husbands, but to turn that grief into action uh, and to protect uh, future uh, people who get uh, a, a, a burn pit related illness. So it was a tremendous day and it was wonderful to hear the President and uh, Mr. McDonough, uh, the Secretary of Veterans Affairs. So I, I want to finish by expressing my gratitude for uh, being able to work with you and be a small part in making this effort ultimately succeed. Uh, we've got the Adjutant General here uh, and, and we'll go to you next. We have June Heston. Uh, whose husband I knew quite well. We used to see each other on the plane quite a bit, and Mike did three tours. Uh, he was always talking about the young enlisted uh, uh, members of the service, uh, always upbeat, uh, always positive. And uh, Alex, uh, it's, it's so good of you to be here too, and I know your, your brother Wes uh, and your sister-in-law Laura played a major role. And, uh, uh, I w was able to be at uh, your brother's service and uh, loved, loved listening to the tribute <laughs> about what a wonderful, mischievous man uh, he was, always there to do the work. Uh, and Scott, we met at the first round table. Absolutely, sir. Um, and, you know, uh, Pat is the one who invited me to that, where it was members of your unit, and uh, you're usually not all that talkative when it comes to anything uh, that affects you, uh, but you had a sense that this was bar not just you, but it was about other service members. Um, and um, Pat often remarks about her observing my reaction because I was shocked. I just didn't know about this. And I should know about it. All people, all Vermonters should know about it, but I just want to acknowledge my memory of that experience with you and members of, of your unit, and thank you for your help there. So, and I do want to just acknowledge Tom and Chip uh, for the great work you did in the legislature and bringing us to 
a further heightened attention of Vermonters uh, using your committee position to elevate this issue to the importance that I think all Vermonters know it has. So with that, I'll uh, turn it over to Adjutant General Knight. Thank you, sir. I appreciate the opportunity, and I was um, incredibly pleased to see this uh, come to fruition. Um, special thanks to you, June, and Pat, um, Alex, certainly all the folks that were a part of this. Uh, it was a, a concerted and sustained effort, um, a, a lot of advocacy uh, for what the end result was. Uh, but I'd also be remiss if I didn't note that uh, now the work starts. Right. Um, I spoke okay. with June about this. I think the important thing is making sure that there's a, a resources, one, put against it because we anticipate that once we get the word out about the PACT Act, there's going to be a surge um, I mean, in activities and requests for support, um, which is as it should be. Uh, my bigger concern, and we talked about this earlier today, there are a number of veterans that <clears throat> once they separate from the service, we lose track of them. And it's, it's disheartening for me to not have a, a easy mechanism to reach them. So I think some of this will come down to, in essence, a marketing campaign and making sure the word gets mm -hmm. out to all veterans. I can certainly focus on the Guard, but uh, I talked with uh, Mr. Gregg, our Deputy Adjutant General, when I look across the Guard at literally the tens of thousands of Vermonters that we've had serve over the past 20 years, <coughs> how many have separated and are probably not tracking this, this event. Mm -hmm. um, we've done great work. Uh, more than tripling the number uh, of our veterans enrolled in the burn pit registry. Uh, I, I would argue there's probably 10 times that number that really need to get the word uh, about not just getting enrolled, but the timelines associated with it and what comes with the PACT Act and make sure that they know uh, there are resources out there for them to take advantage of. But thank you, sir, for your efforts on getting this done. Okay, thank you. Right, June? Thank you. I mean, I've made comments about you, but my goodness, what... Um, Nobody ever better get in your way <laughs> to get something done. Well, I, I, I need to thank um, Senator White and Senator Ash at the time who introduced this because it, it was really only three months after Mike passed away right. when they reached out because one of um, Senator White's constituents said, we've got to do something about this because of what happened with uh, General Heston. So when they called me, you know, I was still lost and not sure. I mean, I had a lot of um, emotion and anger and not sure where to put it. Uh, mm -hmm. And I felt like that gave me an avenue. Mm -hmm. And um, and I had already been very uh, vocal about this issue because people weren't aware and we weren't aware. When Mike was was sick for 10 months and undiagnosed, I thought he got a parasite. I didn't know mm -hmm. that this was something to worry about. I knew about the burn pit, pit registry. I knew that Mike had gotten on it. Never crossed my mind until uh, about a month after Mike was diagnosed, someone sent me an article about a young woman in the uh, Minnesota Guard who died of pancreatic cancer. Hmm. And it was deemed um, related to the burn pits. And so it, I, I feel, um, like it was my my honor and my duty to uh, help all of those who were being denied disability. Mm -hmm. You know, Mike, it took a while, uh, and it, it took being a bit of a n nudge, that's a nice word, um, but he got it. And 80% of the people applying were not getting it, and I felt that was wrong, and I needed right. to do something about that. And this... And you thought regardless of rank... Because your regardless husband, of course, of was rank. high ranking. Right. Right. Regardless of rank. And he said the same thing. We felt like because of his rank, n maybe that was looked at differently. And it should not be. It doesn't matter what your rank is. Mm -hmm. If you've served, you deserve to be taken care of. And um, it, it was, for me, that the, this Vermont legislation was sort of the catalyst. And then I joined the team coalition, which is the toxic exposure of our American military coalition made up of over 30 different VSOs and nonprofits. And we met monthly. And I can't even tell you how many different iterations of legislation we we looked at and read and endorsed or didn't endorse. Um, and it came down to the PACT Act. It came down, all of those pieces came together into this comprehensive piece of legislation that we knew needed to be passed. And every day it was delayed we had service members and veterans who were 
detrimentally affected by that. Mm -hmm. And so I, I'm, I'm uh, overwhelmed, uh, but so pleased that we actually got it done. That's fantastic. Thank you. By the way, I do, I don't do this often, but uh, in my office, Shannon Funari is here. Shannon, I just put your hand up. Uh, she's worked tirelessly on this since we began. And uh, day in and day out, the follow through is everything to keep it going, as all of us here know. And the person in our office who was just committed to this, uh, she's a Vermonter. And uh, it was a labor of love, but it happens to be. Uh, that Shannon is also not just doing labors of love, she's doing a fierce <laughs> advocacy and she is really, really good at her job. Shannon, you played a major role in this and I wanna thank you, we all do. Thanks a lot. Um, Alex. No, wait, yeah. So whatever you wanna go to, sir. Yeah. Okay, <clears throat> no, we'll go with Alex first. Black, go ahead. So I'm the, the brother of Wesley Black, um, his story is pretty well covered uh, through the media. Uh, we found out that he had stage four colon cancer in 2017. Yep, 2017. And then throughout that, that time period of just watching him fight, he had his, he had multiple families helping him. He had the Hartford Fire Department, um, which really pitched in and helped and was working with him to help go to shifts. And my brother's probably one of the strongest people I've ever met. Um, he was still going to shift, still working as much as he could. Um, and then his story got picked up by John Stewart and he and Mr. Stewart really worked tirelessly to, to bring this information to the forefront, to the media. And that's when I think he just continued to realize that was, that was his purpose in life was to just bring as much attention to this subject as possible. Um, because it was one of those things where he was more than willing to give his life for his country, but he wasn't willing to give it that way. Mm -hmm. and so that was one of the things that he wanted to make sure the people in his previous units, he had two combat tours, um, both with Alpha Company, third of the 172nd Mountain. Um, one was to Ramadi in Iraq, 05 to 06, and then we deployed together to Afghanistan in 2010. And he really made an effort to contact as many people as he could, remind them, get on the burn pit registry, what he was going through, he didn't want to see other people go through. And so towards the end of it, I mean, the way I put it is that death didn't take him, but they came to a mutual agreement that neither one was going to give up. So, <laughs> yeah. And like I said, he, I've, I've been in contact with uh, Mr. Stewart's office. He's been keeping me uh, up to date with the PAC Act, the signing, everything like that. And it's, it's definitely something where I don't wanna see the momentum lost. And to piggyback off of uh, the good general here, the, the momentum is there and reaching people that may have slipped through the cracks or just separated and just haven't been in contact, it's finding a way to reach those people. And so, one of the hardest things to do is to regain momentum after it stops. Right. So if we can figure out a good plan to market and reach these people, then the momentum never stops. Thank you, Alex. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, Scott. Yes, sir. <clears throat> so anyway, my connection to this is when we came back from uh, Afghanistan, one of our unit members had prostate cancer. Um, he, you know, suffered a lot. His, wife family suffered a lot uh, he passed and it like right then my cram also had it right so we started thinking that it was you know maybe something that was more to it than just people getting prostate cancer uh, Pat Cram was a huge huge leader for us uh, we all got together as you know that first time just a bunch of us up in Camp Johnson and you know it's hard to believe that from there we got here but very appreciative um, this definitely takes a lot of weight off the family member's shoulders because, right. you know, the, the last thing we want to do is become a burden to our own families, right. even if they don't think that that's happening. Um, so this is one weight that they don't have to think about and worry about as they progress through. And, you know, hopefully people are getting the resources ahead of time now 
so that they can survive these cancers. Right, and there were cases where uh, soldiers died uh, and had no benefits and had no acknowledgement that their death was directly as a result of serving in Afghanistan and Iraq, and it did leave their families uh, really broken, financially very insecure, and that's outrageous. That's really just outrageous. Just for the, uh, the background for the press that we didn't go into, uh, here's what's so significant about this. We had a practice uh, sanctioned by the Department of Defense to dispose of war waste in football size uh, pits where everything that was going to be disposed of was just bulldozed into this pit and, and burned. And these pits were in the vicinity of where soldiers slept and where soldiers ate. Uh, and the soldiers who were in that vicinity were 24 hours a day breathing these fumes. And uh, it turned out that all around the country, but isolated here, isolated there, uh, uh, soldiers who were otherwise perfectly healthy, uh, who had served in these areas, were coming down with terrible cancers, and that we've heard about the ones in Vermont. And this is what was so hard. They started making the connection, but they kept getting a no. They kept getting a no. And it's very similar to what this country did in Vietnam to our Vietnam veterans who served in areas that were being defoliated with Agent Orange, and our soldiers were under the canopy, the, ju the, the, for the jungle canopy, uh, and everything that was defoliating that jungle was going into the lungs of our soldiers. And for decades, our soldiers had to fight uh, to get access to health care and an acknowledgment by the Pentagon uh, that the, was a result of Agent Orange that these soldiers got sick. Uh, and in many cases died. So what this legislation does is that it gives a presumption that the cancer that that soldier has who was in serving in the vicinity of a burn pit got that cancer as a result of his or her service. Okay, so it takes the burden off a soldier who's given everything, like you are saying about your brother. And they don't have to hassle and prove something. You know, where were you on June 7th, you know, of 2006 when you were in Ramadi? Uh, and it's the only dignified way for our country to acknowledge the service. Uh, and there's in health care benefits and then there's death benefits as well. So we don't have just this horrible, uh, I think, conscience-staining event uh, for uh, America to leave um, not only a soldier without health care, but his family without, uh, or her family without uh, any kind of relief. So this was really, really important, overdue. And, um, but now we've got to let folks know about it. And one of the good things is when, you, when we let them know about it, it's not like they have to take on the fight that you all had to take on to show that there's a connection. They've got the presumption, oh, yes, of course, 23 different cancers are all presumed to be a result of uh, exposure to these toxic burn pits. Uh, anybody have any any things that they want to comment or the press if you have any questions we're, we're get, glad to answer those. But we got to get the word out to our soldiers because all they have to do is put in a claim. If they were there where there was a burn pit and they have an illness that's on one of those 23 that are listed, and that's pretty comprehensive, then they're entitled to the health care right away as much as they need. And if, they're, if they die, as too many of them have, uh, they are, their family's going to get benefits. Yes. So when you said that um, Vermonters led the way on this, um, how could you like explain that a little bit further, how you feel like Vermonters in our state really helped uh, pave the way for? Well, I think June can answer that better than me. I mean, what happened is uh, this unit, you know, what my, our office involvement was when we got contacted by Pat, who lost her husband. And Pat Cram uh, is related uh, to another staffer, Ryan McLaren. Um, and uh, they, they told us about it and then set up a meeting. And I went and then was with all these, there were, I think, 18 of us there, right, sitting around? I believe so, sir. It was about about that, but it was, and there were several right there who were telling us about their illnesses, and of course, 
uh, Mike, uh, Mike had passed away by then. Uh, and then this is where I think June and uh, Wesley, uh, uh, you know, it, it, the work uh, Laura did, uh, you know, John, started advocating for it constantly, constantly. And then when I went back to Washington, I started talking to my colleagues. And whether they were Republican or Democrat, they had lots of folks in their districts who had served in Iraq and Afghanistan. And I started hearing from my colleagues, yeah, I heard that too, because we didn't know about it. We didn't, we should, but we didn't, okay? And I found out about it because of the advocacy of the Guard, and then I was in a position to talk to members, and they were hearing the same thing, and then it became something that was a real issue for our Veteran Affairs Committee, and the pressure was just, unrelenting and uh, one of the primary movers was the advocates you Pat uh, Laura it, right here in Vermont and our legislature took it up around, it all added up around what time did you did people like um, Pat and June start coming up to you saying we're we're getting no we, our husbands are failing members they're, they're getting denied this care from the um, VA around when did that conversation start this is federal yeah. Yeah. When Mike was diagnosed in 2017, he, uh, the burn pit registry was established in, in 2014. And when it came out, Mike said, you don't establish a registry in you unless you know there's a problem. And, and, but it still didn't cross our minds when he was sick that that could have been an issue because there was no visibility on on the fact that there were burn pits being used to dispose of all types of garbage in um, both uh, Iraq and Afghanistan and in other places. And um, so he, he knew there was an issue, but we didn't think about it until we found out about someone else passing away. And that's when I started l looking into all of this. And I discovered that in 2010, um, a 27-page memo went to every VA clinic and health provider in the country, 27 pages about the toxins that were being um, detected from these burn pits and how it could increase the um, demand on the VA. Um, and still in 2018, 19, 20, 80 percent of the people applying were being denied because there wasn't enough evidence that the burning of all these toxic substances ignited with jet fuel. And when, when Congressman Welch says burn pit, you probably think of the little burning thing in the backyard. This is 20 acres. Picture 15 football fields of stuff burning. And n nobody was talking about it. It, nobody knew. And the difference between Agent Orange, which this PACT Act also addresses, increases the benefits for people exposed to Agent Orange, and gives benefits to camp people who were based at Camp Lejeune and were exposed to the um, contaminated water there. So it's a broad, mm -hmm. um, right. very comprehensive act. The difference between Agent Orange and the burn pits is Agent Orange was used in this country to defoliate. They didn't know the impact of Agent Orange, and so they used it everywhere. We have OSHA regulations against burning styrofoam and tires and munitions and vehicles. We have OSHA regulations. We're not allowed to do that in this country, we individuals. But our DOD is. There is still burning going on in this country, and there's still burn pits going on overseas for getting rid of garbage. Um, but we can't do that because we know how dangerous that is. And so when I ask the question, okay, I understand there's an exemption from our, you know, for our federal government and that they can do this. Why? You know it's dangerous. You know it's going to cause illness and death. So when you, I know you said, oh, we heard about a young woman who had mm -hmm. similar cancer and it clicked for you. And that's when you really started to, around what time was that where, where you really started to present this issue to your local office. February of 2017. Okay. Although at that point, I, I didn't do anything for advocacy. I was fighting for my husband. Right. Okay, thanks. Thank you. And uh, Congressman, you said that outreach and letting people know that this is a possibility is one of the biggest things now. 
So I know that doing things like this helps with that. Right. Um, but is there any other direct outreach to veterans that you guys have planned as a Well, there, it's in the legislation, there's uh, efforts to uh, publicize this and make all the members aware. But the, the best advocates are, are the, the servicemen and, and women who talk to one another, and they have a relationship of trust that's unique. Uh, so there is money in the legislation to try to get the word out. But, uh, you know, to, General, you can probably speak to the, speak to this the best. I mean, some, so many members get back and they, uh, you don't know where they are, but they need each other. You know, and the good news is we've got a lot of veterans organizations um, where, uh, and the VA, by the way, uh, where the information can be provided. So if somebody shows up and is a veteran and they've got an illness, even if they didn't know about it, but it's on the list of 23, then they're not going to get hassled. They'll automatically get the health care. Mm -hmm. And see, I, with the, with, with, uh, you know, listening to you and Pat yesterday and talking about your husbands and what was so important to them, they understood that there was a lot of kids they were working with over there, there. They were like 18 or 19. And, you know, they're not thinking about this at all. But when they're 32, 35, uh, this uh, to toxic exposure is when the cancer can show up, okay? So they're not going to have any memory of what happened at 18. They'll know they were over there, but it's not like you're going to make that cause and effect. They don't have to now. You know, they don't have to. If they have any one of these illnesses, they immediately are entitled to VA benefits. That's what, and that's what you explained to me, Mike, and in 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 uh, in, 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 in uh, uh, Mike Cram. They were so concerned about the well-being of those young people that they serve with. <clears throat> um, yeah. Will soldiers still have to put their names on that registry, on that burn pit registry, because? I well, they don't have to, but it's a good thing to do. I mean, the, the registry is about getting documentation. Um, and in fact, it's less of a, a big issue. It would, it would the, we started on this, not, and this was before I was involved, okay? Uh, but the burn pit registry was being pushed by people who had a sense that there was a connection and then needed documentation to establish it. And it was an act of... Uh, uh, it was a good, it was an act of solidarity for members who were aware of the registry to put their name on it. So then you started getting the information that allowed us to come to some conclusions. So that was a precursor uh, to then the act of uh, advocacy for the PACT Act. And I feel like the registry was, we, that was important when we were looking at legislation in Vermont because it was the only way to put your hand up and say this, this happened to me. And now that we have this legislation, I think what's important is that people, it's not, it's not great data because you can't go back in. Once you fill it out, then um, what's in there is in there. So m my husband filled it out in 2014. He didn't get sick until 2016. You can't go back in and say he passed away from pancreatic cancer. So it's not the best data, but I believed that they were gonna be making decisions <clears throat> on legislation based on numbers. And I still think you, you want to be counted. You want to put your information in there. And it's not, it's not a great database. It asks questions that are irrelevant to whether or not you were exposed to toxins in your service career. Um, but it is important to be counted. So someone can do that. Someone can put their name on that registry. However, they don't have to in order to receive care. No, that's correct. absolutely not. That's correct. No, that's what's so really good about this legislation. The presumption is you got that illness when you were in service, if you were in the vicinity of a burn pit. So is there anything people have to do? All they have to say is, you're diagnosing me with this, I was exposed to this, and they were going to receive care. And that's correct. For those 23 illnesses. Okay. That's correct. There's still a broad <clears throat> spectrum of people who aren't going to be who are still going to have to show that or prove that there's a connection. Okay. Um, but if you, if you have one of those 23, yes, that's the case. Okay. Can you give me an example of like three out of the 23? Like where well, is prostate cancer, from? right? Prostate cancer, pancreatic cancer, glioblastoma, those are ones that are on there because those are some of the top okay. cancers. And but it's respiratory husband, illnesses. Your husband had pancreatic. Pancreatic, so right. 
Is it just forms of cancer? Is that no. It's respiratory illnesses. It's asthma, uh, rhinitis, asthma. sinusitis, yeah. Um, yeah. upper respiratory diseases as well. Mm -hmm. I, I think uh, what what's we'll important. Over, we'll hear from Bob. Hey, Bob. I think so what's important ahead, like, ahead, is, is to – comes back to something you had mentioned, Congressman, is actually getting the word out, and I think that's where we all are involved here. Whether we use veterans' organizations, VFWs, legions, uh, patriotic organizations, um, Vietnam Veterans of America, Combat mm -hmm. Motorcycle Association, this, all of – our legislators, certainly, um, both uh, in state and on Capitol Hill, um, I will certainly leverage – my relationships with the adjutant's general and the commanding general in D.C. Uh, to do the same thing that we're doing here in Vermont. Uh, that, I think, is far more effective. Um, the ground-level impact of that, we have much more familiarity with the folks who've been there. We'll leverage those networks and relationships to help get the word out. Um, that in conjunction with whatever we can do uh, nationally with a national media campaign. That's great. Thank you. And we've got Bob Burke. Do you want to add? Uh, yeah, just Bob, of course, is uh, the director of the Office of Veteran Affairs, Bob. Go for the ahead. state of Vermont. So um, thank you for, for this great effort. We talk about outreach. We talk about connections. And this is certainly one way to do it. Thank you to June for bringing up. There's a lot in the PACT Act. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a good summary on the VA.gov page. Um, but Agent Orange, new presumptives, new areas mm -hmm. um, included in the exposure. Radiation exposures, mm -hmm. new areas listed there. Um, <clears throat> Camp Lejeune, I, I really want to bring up the point of you're seeing these television commercials that are talking about Camp Lejeune exposure. Okay, some of these companies are looking to take upwards of 40% of the benefits that you would be due back from when you were exposed. 40%. My office has service officers, BFW, DAV, American Legion is about to hire one. Don't go it alone. Use a service officer, it's mm -hmm. free of charge. Why lose 40% of the benefits that That's you good advice. Need? Yeah. And additionally, um, there's expanded medical care uh, available under the PACT Act also. It opens opens up that aperture a bit more. So just – That's good. Thank you for that. Pitches, so. Yeah, that's good. It does provide a lot more resources to the VA. Um, it's, it's expanding the money that the VA has because there are – Often budget restrictions, and and sometimes you can't get into the VA if you're if you don't have some um, rate disability rating, and so that's how this will help. But people will will be able to use the VA because they will have a service connected disability. And the, can the VA? I know you kind of teased to it a little bit, anticipating this surge once this one gets out, you might see a surge in the care that's needed. Is there any? Um, is, the, is, there any, is the VA ready for that, I guess? Is, is like the, the way that I can step Frankly, down? no. <laughs> but they're, they're getting the resources. They're gearing up like everybody else. Mm -hmm. yep. You know, you can't do anything in anticipation of a bill signing, but once the bill is signed, we know there's money attached to it. Okay, here's our needs. How do we meet them? Yep. Isn't there a price tag on this? If the bill is so there's money attached to it, I don't know if there's any numbers. There, there, there is. 280 billion dollars. Right. Uh, for the for the PACT Act, so yeah, yes, yeah. essentially. I think it's also important to note that you know, we're very fortunate here in Vermont. Um, our Vermont Veterans Affairs, um, their, their advisors, their, their counselors do a wonderful job helping veterans navigate the VA system. And we're also very fortunate to have our federal VA here uh, in White River Junction and Lakeside Clinic. They just do remarkable work, um, and we're very fortunate to have them. But also within the Vermont Guard, within our family programs, we have Vermont Veteran Outreach Coordinators. So there's a lot of resources out there. So to your point, Bob, folks don't need to go it alone. Uh, it can be very complex and a very daunting process. There are folks here who are well-versed in helping our veterans work through that process, and that's what we're here for. Go ahead. No, we're oh. glad to answer all your questions. Uh, Thank you. In March, it was 834 Vermonters that were registered on the uh, burn pit. I, I just don't know yeah. if there's an updated number that we're supposed to be right now. Yeah. So I can tell you as the end of July, so July 31st, we were up to 1,040 enrolled. And again, uh, there are more out there. Um, 
enrolling is a choice. I would encourage it. And I would also encourage any veteran, if they're not using the VA system, and, and we've been talking here sometimes, and, and Congressman had a great point, somebody who separates from the service, having deployed once or twice or however many, 10 years later, you develop some aberrant disease, you may not put two and two together. Um, June didn't even initially. Um, I think we need to be better attuned to that and make sure that our veterans understand. Certainly, you can go to a primary care provider, but if it's not something that you expect to see, make sure you sign a release of information and, and get your medical documentation sent to the VA so they can at least have knowledge of it and perhaps make the linkage to burn pit exposure. Thank you. I want to thank everyone. You know, every once in a while, I've got a job where every once in a while I can do something useful. <laughs> Not often, but this was one time. It was really wonderful to, for Shannon and I in our office to work uh, with all of you on this. And it's a lot of veterans are going to be uh, uh, helped by uh, the work that you did and the efforts you made to get the president's signature on this uh, legislation. So. I just want to, again, express my gratitude. And I know all Vermonters feel thrilled uh, at the outcome of this and what it means for veterans. So thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you. you.